This video is not about the microcontroller board. I wanna share three interlocking strategies so that you could start your own R&D firm and survive the business cycle. This is like an ebb and flow of cash that's essentially an unfiltered sine wave. It's very dangerous if you're just starting out. So three things. First, you have to thread your projects. So this is like multitasking, threading. You wanna make sure that you're pausing on the project you're working on and going and doing business development. You can't just grind on the one project until it's totally done. You have to be preparing for the next project. Number two, portfolio projects. That would be something like this. This is something that you're not getting paid for. You are working on it in public. I recommend with a social media footprint. So set up a channel like mine, do a project that you're not getting paid for, share it with the world. Yes, it's gonna be open source inevitably because you're disclosing it to the world. So you can't share your customer projects because they're proprietary, obviously. In many cases, you have non-disclosure agreements and you just wouldn't wanna share your customer projects in the first place. But you can make your own projects, nerd out on them, share them with the world. And if you're really boss level, you actually work on machinery that you could build and use at your own little factory you might set up. Ever heard of the Leonard Project? That's a prime example of a portfolio project that is completely open source. I'm sharing it with the world. It's doing literally nothing for me other than something cool I can work on and share with everybody. Number three on the list is manufacturing. I don't care how small you are. I don't care if you're in a dorm room. You can kit something up and take it to FedEx and ship it out for your customer. That might be where it starts. There might be a very small startup that just needs you to do like technical assembly on one piece or 10 pieces of something, typically after the prototype's finished. The products you see on store shelves that are in like the millions of annual volume that are made offshore, those things go through this whole development process and ramp up before they get to that point. I'd say like 90% of prototypes never even make it there. There's a whole bunch of stuff that ends up having to go from like 10 pieces to 100 pieces to 1,000. Each order of magnitude is gonna have completely different manufacturing requirements. In many cases, there's completely different test fixtures, completely different machinery. All that stuff is value engineering that if you're an engineer or designer, you need to insert yourself into that process and guide your customer along the way because why would you have somebody else do those projects if you're perfectly capable of doing them? If you can lock in all three of these items, you can keep your cash flow a lot smoother and you can survive this for 20, 30 years. So just wanted to share that with everybody. I've got a lot of questions about like, how do you find customers? How do you start off? So not a very fancy video today, but this is like essential critical information. Share it with the world if you like. Thanks so much for watching. Adios.